Hello and welcome to the Walk and Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about... Uh, one thing I do to be more productive every week. Thank you for listening to the Walk and Love podcast, a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about emotions, rhythms, marriage, parent, and faith. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we find try to find the language to live a full life. Whoa, did thought, you just write that? I wrote it last week. Wow, who's that guy? I thought it might sound good at the beginning. What was that last part again? Read that last sentence. Just the last one. I mean, I, I caught all the rest of it. Well, I think I should read it again. Okay, okay. Maybe slow down a little bit. Welcome to the Walk and Love podcast, a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about emotions, rhythms, marriage, parenting, and faith. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we try to find language to live a full life. <sighs> what? I feel like... <laughs> I'm instantly weeping over the intro. I feel like we don't often take ourselves too seriously mm. but then i also feel like there would be a lot of value in taking ourselves just a <laughs> touch seriouser more seriously more seriously are you yeah it's because it's like more seriously you know why waste time say lot word when few word do trick i agree with that so i there's a couple things that i want to do for the podcast and i feel like episode 141 might be a place to start that one is have a, like i like our intro but i feel like there should be like a Right. But you're going to read it every time instead of like pre-record it. Well, like that's what I'm not sure. I, like with like music? I feel like it'd be cool with music. Oh, okay. That and I feel like all the segments could have like... like. I mean, I've always wanted more official buttons for our for, segments. For the segments. Uh, they so, can be the ridiculous sound clips right, that I've made them to be. but you should pre-record yourself calling over yeah. Mount Rushmore. Yeah, so... With some electricity. In Anyways, I, I thought I wrote this last week and I was like... I love it. Let's do uh, it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week, you beautiful butt clenchers. We are excited today <laughs> oh to word. talk about whatever. Bro this is a Brooke topic, a Brooke mm -hmm. series, or is it just a Brooke um, topic? Yeah, it could be. If I if I take a little, if I get uh, my stuff together, but, um, if I take today's advice, this could be a series. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So Brooke, when she was in Austin, said she wrote a few episode ideas down. And so I'm coming into this mostly blind, actually completely blind. I don't know what we're going to talk about. That's, I found this out. Is, the roles are reversed right now. Yeah. That's me most podcast I found episodes. out as soon as you guys did. So I'm excited. Um, what do we do? We have a few things <laughs> news related to tell you. Okay. One, our fulfillment and printing center is in Orlando, Florida, which just got hit by the giant hurricane, which I don't know the name of it. Thankfully, everyone that works for Threadbird is safe. Uh, we think all your shirts are safe. We think. We, we haven't heard of that. But mm -hmm. I think that they're all, everything's okay. It's just they close the shop for a few days, which yeah. like that just delays everything. So fall shipments are probably going to be delayed. I still don't have the final word on that. But yeah. as soon as they ship, start shipping, we'll post to the, to the story. Um, so yeah, just that's like a news update. And I'm hoping that our Christmas samples get here. When they said they're going to get here, so who knows? Yeah. We'll 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 make it work. Whatever happens, just thankful that everyone's safe, and hopefully, if you live in Florida, you are safe as well, because um, that looked brutal, like super brutal. Yeah, so scary. Um, that that's one piece of news. The other piece of news is we have a subscription on Instagram. So if you want to support the podcast, that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, where we're sharing. We haven't even really started the actual content that we plan to bring to the Instagram subscription, but we've yeah. been sharing to the people that are there. And uh, Mackenzie and the whole group are just loving <laughs> it. Mackenzie and the gang. <laughs> Mackenzie and the gang. Uh, we shared a few of the new designs, uh, some of the items that we're going to release for Christmas. Um, I feel like we've been a little bit more just behind the scenes authentic um, with the subscription. And mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. It's done something to Brooke and I where we're like, man, this has actually kind of reinvigorated us. So that's a great way to support the podcast if you want to do that. And then another great way to support the podcast is uh, October 14th. The Christmas collection goes live. Yeah. A lot, it's our biggest collection of the year. It's our <laughs> last collection of the year. Um, and, you know, if you want to buy gifts for friends or family or kids, we got a lot of kids stuff coming out for this collection. A few new designs, a lot of classics. Um, but yeah, we're super stoked about it. I think that's all the sort of news. The other big news is Brooke's going to turn 36 Yeah, in eight days. Eight yes. days from recording. 
Right. <clears throat> That's. How's that feel? That feels crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Is Am I just at the point where every number from here on out is going to feel crazy? Everything hurts and I'm dying. Hmm. Basically. <laughs> Much less since I cut gluten. But, nice. Um, yeah. I think that's all the news that I have, right? I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. We're going to do a segment? Yes. <laughs> the, the, type, the typewriter sound. I still don't. What's well, your typing? Yeah, and I know. Then, I know. wish my keyboard had that dinging sound every time I hit enter. You would love it next to me. Uh, what I Googled. Brooke, take it away. Oh, boy. Yours are always better than mine because I don't... I feel like you Google stuff more. Right. What does that say about me? I'm more curious? I don't know. I think... I'm more fearful? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like, one, you... It'll bug you if you don't get the answer. Like right. that, like I'm just You're like, just oh, okay with it. Oh, whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll just make up an answer. Sounds right. Uh-huh. How do volcanoes work, Dad? I don't know. Lava. <laughs> Rick's like, let's watch a video. Let's learn. Right. It's like something about lava or something. Mm-hmm. Pressure. I don't know. Hopefully, I never have to find out. Right. Yeah. Um. Okay, so working from most recent, and then we're going to go backwards, yeah? Okay. Bodies oh, exhibit that Las super Vegas. Hawaiian. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Bodies exhibit Las <laughs> Vegas. We were talking with friends last night who are going to Vegas, and I said the craziest thing I ever saw in Vegas was the bodies exhibit in Las Vegas. And so we Googled it to show we Googled like it a to show pictures. Show an image. There's not a lot of images online. Right. There's a decent amount, but, but one of the creepier like I actually am surprised we went. I, Same. I Same. Like I don't know. If we didn't we, have kids. Yeah. I don't know if that for some reason makes it different. I just feel like my uh, tolerance for stuff like that is not what it used to be. Not that I feel like, oh, yeah, I have a tolerance for looking at the inside of someone's <laughs> skeleton. Right. right. But, but yeah, uh, I even am just a little looking... surprised that like, we really, we didn't pick something else to do. I mean, we were... It It was in the hotel that we were staying in. It was in the hotel in. we were staying and we had suddenly been given more time. Yeah, we like weren't expecting to be was there longer. And so we were just like, oh, and so well, it was we like, do well, I guess we'll do this. Um, I mean, it was crazy. It's yeah. It's a. If you don't know, it's real bodies. Real bodies, kind of dissected, but not yes. in like a horror way, and no. just more of like a scientific. It's crazy. Yeah, I had <laughs> honestly kind of forgotten we went to see it until, we were until, ta- I, until, until they were talking about crazy Las Vegas, and I was like, I mean, we've never done like other like crazy Las Vegas. Yeah, like stuff. they were talking about. Ian was saying he wanted to shoot a bazooka. Ian so, from Carmart. Yeah, Ian from Carmart. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I Googled uh, Bodies Exhibit Las Vegas. <laughs> you going to go? Okay, yeah. Uh, Mark Patterson, he's an author. We were yes. talking about him last night too. And so I was like, I think he wrote that book in a pit with a line on a snowy day, which yeah. I've read years ago. Excellent book. And so I was right. Way to go. Yeah, See, I read sometimes. Not a total oblivion. <laughs> um, what age do babies typically drop their morning nap? Which like, I know, I've had two girls who've done it. But it's like, I just needed a refresher because I felt like 12 months on the dot was not, was too early. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it is. It's typically like almost right in between one and two. Yeah. So she's still taking two naps. Two naps. I just needed to know. We uh, have a sleep sack. Is that what it's called? Sleep? Kind of. It's like a, I guess. Amazon knockoff version. Mm -hmm. I think sleep sack's an actual brand. Correct. It's not an Amazon knockoff. It's just a separate brand. Looks like Can't a starfish think of the name of it right now, but Daisy's been getting frustrated and obviously we want to wean her out of it. Like, and just like let her. So <laughs> this is such a third kid thing. <laughs> so Brooke just takes a pair of scissors and snips off the, the, the little like, hand part. Hands. So her hands are no longer trapped inside the little starfish. She can get her arms all the way out now to reach some stuff, which is great. She's been a lot happier. <laughs> yeah. Like if she loses her binky or whatever, it's but easier for her it's to get. so funny when you go in there because to me, she looks like a little boxer like that's like like it looks like something i would have worked out wrestling like done wrestling in okay to lose weight at practice because it's like like it's a sweatsuit you know and it's like zipped up and then like the arms are cut off and it was just like just looks like something a boxer or like a wrestler who's like i need to make weight and so you you come in there and she's sitting up she's all sweaty and i'm just like what is amazing so cute so cute yeah um world's biggest cupcake (laughs) June wanted to know. And I said, well, 
let's because we've I've added <clears throat> I've added something to it's not like any specific time during school time thank you um but it's just like they ask me questions all the time and I which yeah. is great and I don't want to be like I don't know and like dismiss it but I also like <laughs> I also don't want to make up an answer like I want to make up an answer does. you know <laughs> but I don't want to be interrupted constantly to go search for the answer immediately like I I want to answer their question but I don't want to build the habit of like you need to know right now and it's all consuming like yeah. you know so I've been keeping track of their questions and then we have I don't know, sometimes June calls it question time or curiosity time or whatever. We sit yeah. on the couch and I project my phone up onto the TV so that we're not just like on my device, but we're seeing it big. Yeah. And I Google their questions. So world's biggest cupcake. How big? It's 11 feet in diameter. Wow. Yes. That's the one thing I remember. And then it was like, was it 2,000 pounds? Or 4,000 right. pounds. 2,000, maybe 2,000. Maybe 4,000 or something else. But it was four or five times the size of the previous world record wow. holder. Three words for you. Treat, yo, sell. So it wasn't very pretty. Yeah. Like I thought, man, if you're going to make one that big, like make do it. something cool on the top. Like make it look yeah. like a giant oversized. What would you do? It was like, I mean, there was icing on the top. And I think it was for some fundraiser because there was like the breast cancer um, okay. like ribbon the, the symbol. Ribbon. Okay. But it literally looked like they'd cut it out of paper 15 times and just... Oh, okay. Like stuck it on the top, and I was like, uh. "I mean, that's a lot of icing." I know. I guess I don't know. I wanted like appropriate size sprinkles. Oh, Do you know okay. what I mean? Like, yep. if you're gonna go for yep. the world's biggest cupcake, like, might as well throw the world's biggest sprinkle. Give me record in there to look at on top. World's biggest pan, world's biggest oven. I bet those things exist. Um. Okay. I I Google two things that go together. Mm -hmm. Will there be more Ghostbuster movies? Brooke and I this weekend. Oh, I, I feel like we're just getting old. So on Friday, <laughs> we watch a family movie. As a family, we're going through the Star Wars movies. Right. Which is very exciting for June. Sunny can kind of like... Just take it or leave take it. Take it or leave it. She kind of plays and leaves. But June is like all in. Mm -hmm. Although Sunny now wants to have a lightsaber incorporated into her Halloween costume. But she doesn't want to be a Jedi. No. She's going to be a ballerina who carries a <laughs> So, And I said, I love that idea. <laughs> so that's the world Let's that we're living happen. in. <laughs> anyway, so so what we've done in the past is like, we'll watch a family movie on Friday after Shabbat dinner. <clears throat> and then we will, we used to, Brooke and I stay up and watch another movie together. We can't seem to make it that far in life. No. Like, And we don't even finish the family movie. Like the Star Wars movie, we watch about half. Right. And then we finish the next half in, on Saturday morning because Saturday... Yeah. Morning is the only day our kids are allowed to watch something in the morning. Yeah. And so we're not even watching a full movie and then we can't even finish like our grown up <laughs> movie. So we started watching Ghostbusters, the new one, Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I had seen before. With the Stranger Things kid. <laughs> Stranger Things kid, and Paul, Paul Rudd. Rudd. Um, and which can reconfirm, not reconfirmed. I never lost hope. I really like Paul Rudd. Yeah. But as an actor, I know nothing about him personally, nor do I desire to. Yeah. Because it will change things and I'm not interested, <laughs> but he's very funny. And I just, I enjoy his shtick. He's like, he's always got like swaying shoulders you know. and like, yeah. You know. I mean, at, back when, from when he was like on friends with Phoebe. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He married Phoebe. Yeah. <sighs> was Phoebe there? <laughs> um, so yeah, we watched it. So I Googled, will there be another Ghostbuster movies? Cause I actually liked afterlife. I feel like it did a good job of like, Paying tribute to the originals, which are classic, timeless, amazing yeah. movies. We'll explain who did this new one. So, yeah. So. Because I found that. Uh, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the names right now. You are Brooke. I am TJ. <laughs> oh, man. Harold Ramis is the actor that was in Ghostbusters that passed away. So they okay. really paid tribute to him in the movie. Right. Ivan Reitman was the original director of the original Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Writer and director or just director? Just director. And I think he kind of helped write. I think the guy who passed away Harold helped Ramis write. Harold Ramis wrote as wrote well Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters 1 and 2. A lot of trivia here. Um, Reitman, the director of Ghostbusters, the originals, and Ramis both passed away within the last, I don't know, five years. I'm not um, sure, but yes. And his, Reitman's son directed this new this one. new one so I, that was just cool and they i feel like they did a good job especially in like 
modern culture where like every classic character is getting destroyed and ruined and like they're right. never that great anyways they were always a bad guy or like every <laughs> other character now is better or whatever like yeah. i have strong feelings about that i feel like they did a really Which good you will job share in our subscription yeah <laughs> Subscriptions for the, the paywall, for everybody. the spice. It's a spicy. It's a spicy subscription. <laughs> um, uh, but I feel like they honored it really well, and like the movie has its own has its flaws, definitely. But like overall, it was just like it was an just entertaining an enjoyable movie. movie that did a pretty good job with the nostalgia without like going overboard on the nostalgia. So I was like, man, I, I yeah. think an, an actual next one would be pretty good. Yeah. Um, and so they are making another one. And then I googled Slavica Joven. Because she played Gomer in the first Ghostbusters. Yes. And I was like, and Olivia Wilde plays Gomer in the this one. Yes. And I wanted to show Brooke how much they, they made, look like each other. They made them look look like each other. Yeah. Because so, Brooke's never seen the original. I have not. That's gonna be this week. And I'm a I'm a Bill Murray fan. So You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I bet I will. Um yeah. okay. Let's do Two more? Three more? I have a few good ones. Okay, so we'll just try not to talk as much. Yeah. Um, how to reorder your Apple Music playlist. I was like, come on, Brooke. I don't understand why I'm, pu I'm pushing and dragging. Old. Like, I am not techno technologically incompetent. I do a lot of technology for my job, and I can figure it out. And I... I go online. I go click, click, click. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was fine. I figured it out then. Google helped me. <laughs> um, what is 25% off 83? <laughs> Didn't want to get out my calculator. I just needed it to know. It's Googling math equations. Oh, I Google math equations all the time. So I'm like, yeah, June's fine. She'll love Google. I'm kidding. She loves math. <laughs> she loves math and I'm teaching her math, everybody. <laughs> Chill out. Um, what do you call a female bobcat? So okay. this happened because, okay, so back up to when you and I, TJ, we went to see Nate Bargatze's uh stand up when he sure. came here he came to on island which yep. was shocking and i feel like half of maui went because yep. somebody came here he had this really really funny bit about families with girls well he has a girl can i can i explain the yeah, bit? yeah if he, I remember he's it. got a girl he's like i have a daughter and so like a friend of mine you know asked me if i could watch his kid for a while i was like oh yeah i know how to do this kid or I have kids? A kid. kid just one and he's like so he dropped off his son i didn't know they were so different and then he came back and picked him up and he was like, how'd it go? And I said, well, you let a live bobcat uh, go in my house. How Basically. do you think it went? Like, yeah, just the like difference you set a bobcat between, loose in my house. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> just for the difference between the girl energy and the boy energy. And so our friends, Bianca and Ian from Carmart, <laughs> they were also at this show, but three rows in front of us because they have more money. We get it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think they just bought their tickets like nine seconds before we did. But it was funny. They were in the same section as us, just like a couple rows up so we could see the back of their heads. And when he made that, because they have four boys, when they when he made that Bobcat joke, they I saw them double forward yes. and just laugh. Just, and so that's been their language ever I, since. Like it is, it's a house full of Bobcats. Yep. And so they were going to come over here and for Daisy's birthday and but their sports schedule and naps. And Bianca's like, I just don't know if you want us to bring our Bobcat energy over right now. Yeah. Like we're a little much yeah. from our long morning. Let's do it another day. And I said, well, one, I'm always, I'll always welcome your Bobcat energy. Yeah. Also, I wonder what a female Bobcat is called. And we both Googled it at the same time and then sent each other screenshots in all caps. They're called Queens. <laughs> like all caps they're called queens oh, just like bianca no bobcat queen so <laughs> i have started calling her queen <laughs> and using all the queen gifts yeah. which i love um and then under the description it was like males are called tomcats it's tomcat yeah. females are called queens uh the young is sometimes called a litter um uh what was the word starts with a c a clutter a clutter or an embarrassment <laughs> Like, and it was being serious. It was, just like, it was like using that word. And I was just like, Bobcat is so accurate. And yeah. so that was just really funny for any of you out there who have boys. You can um, probably relate yeah. to the Bobcat energy. The Bobcat energy. Um, how to put new iPhone dark asleep. Yeah, because it's, it has this like always on feature kind of. Uh -huh. And I was like, I'm trying to go to sleep. Turn Hello. off. <laughs> Turn it off the whole way. If you put it on like the do not disturb sleep, it does. Yeah. Um, Chunky Chef Sloppy Joe's. She's the best sloppy joe recipe. Should I have written it down by now? Absolutely. <laughs> Will I Google it every time? Probably. 100%. <laughs> How many feet in a mile? Distance from Earth to Milky Way. <laughs> what is the distance from Earth to the moon? So June wanted to know, is the moon further or the Milky Way further? 
And I feel dumb that I didn't like know how far away the Milky Way was. But to the moon, it was like, I don't know, I can't see my answers here. Like just uh, hundreds of 10,000 miles. Something's 93,000. That's the sign. 93 million miles to the sun. Right. The moon is like, okay. Oh, 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 do you have something? Shut up about the sun. (laughs) Shut up about the sun. (laughs) You finally got to use it. (laughs) Oh, Oh. man. (laughs) Thanks for listening. See you later. See you guys. See you next week. Um, So funny. But anyway, the Milky Way is like, I don't know, guys. Are you talking about the center of the Milky Way? Like, because aren't we in the, we're in the Milky Way galaxy. So. Yes. Or part of I don't know exactly what, I just said Earth to Milky Way. Okay. Anyway, it was like jillions of light years versus like actual miles. (laughs) And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. This is, this is very different. Um, (laughs) Largest species of centipede in the world. Yep. Accidentally watched some videos on that. Actually, not accidentally. June wanted to. Have because they been it, unable to sleep? What, is there a man? Yes, there is a man who has a pet centipede that's maybe uh, oh. 18 inches or more. And he takes it out of its tank. Nope. And he lets it crawl on him as you would like a snake, like slithering around. And the, nope. it does look a little more endearing when you see it. Like, Yeah. Nope. What do centipedes eat? Types of geckos on Maui. Please, How to no, tell the difference? No. Yeah, between a boy and a girl gecko. Lots of questions about yeah. all the things. Because well, Gecky Becky lost her tail. Right, and we were wondering. Was just, it actually Becky, or was it? Was it actually Gecky? Yeah. Um, where to watch Room on the Broom for free? No, you can't. Nowhere right now. Ah, <sighs> does kale make you poop? <laughs> it does, you guys. Which is obvious because it's like it's in the whole like roughage category of food. But I think the better question should have been, does kale make you explosively poop? (laughs) I think that would have been a little more like clarifying because that's the answers I was getting. Like, uh, yeah, especially if you don't eat it a lot and then you eat a bunch. So I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you thinking about that. Um, Yeah, I think that's probably... That's it? Wow. I mean, there's a lot. Ding! That's what Brooke Googled. That's a nice little recap Honestly, for you. Where does it end with you people? <laughs> um, okay, so what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about, we actually briefly talked about it one other time. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me close out of my Google. Ah, bodies exhibit, photos are still up. <laughs> In my safari, look. So scary. Okay. Um, Too far! Yeah. Okay, so we talked at one time about my little, how I use my notes app Yes. to like plan my week. Um, and I still, I do mean it. I still genuinely intend to share my little template. Uh huh. But I want to back up a little bit. So the, the one thing, like let's say this is the title of the episode. I don't know if it will be, but the one thing I do to live more proactively would okay. be setting aside regular time to plan the next week like that's like that's the biggest takeaway now there's specifics and there's ways to do that and all that but like you think about it and this is kind of how we felt with our family plan calendar like there are so many systems in biz in the business world right that set you up for success no one would be like hey what are you doing right now planning next week what a waste of your time you should be doing something else like if you take it out of the home and stick it into the business world People would be like, that's great. You're going to have a better week next week. Yep. You're going to know what's 100%. going on. You're going to accomplish more, blah, blah, blah. And then at home, it's just sheer chaos half the time. Yep. And setting aside 10, 20, 30, whatever it needs to be for you, minutes, feels like impossible or not a priority or silly or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> my dad used to have this phrase. I'm sure it's not his phrase, but he used to call it, um, when he was, he used to have a kids TV show when I was in like middle school, early high school. And so he had this <laughs> printed out. It said, plan the shoot, shoot the plan. Right. And like, I'm sh- again, I'm sure it's not his, yeah. but that idea, obviously we're planning the photo shoot or video shoot. And then when we get there, all we have to do is shoot the plan. Right. And like, I don't feel like a lot of moms like believe that about their days in their weeks that like, Hey, if I just gave a little bit of time, I bet it would, ha- I bet it would have like drastic right. changes. Yeah. Um, a lot of, it feels like 
in modern culture, a lot of moms play defense. And 100%. they put their kid, they elevate their kid to coach status and they're mm-hmm. just a player on the field. And so the kid ends up coaching the day by their rage or their energy or their excitement or their frustration. And mom is just like a player trying to understand what play we're running. Yes. Instead of the other way around where mom's like, hey, these are the plays we're running today and we're going to run them well and we're going to run them with excitement or energy, you know, whatever, like they, they can still be super positive. I think a lot of people are like, oh, structure, that's a negative word. Blah. It's like, no, it's an incredible word. Yeah. Uh, and especially like if you're sitting in a house, they built that structure to survive. Right. Um, well, yeah, I think people confuse structure with like a strict schedule. Right. And those are insanely two different things. Yeah. <laughs> but I just feel like that's sort of the, the, the place where a lot of parent you know i'm painting with a broad brush obviously right. my favorite there, yeah there are some parents that are so good at this yes but there are a lot of parents who are literally just a player on the team mm-hmm. and they're letting their kid or kids be the coach because it can especially get tricky like june is so laid back daisy is so easy it would be very easy for us to put sunny into that coach's role because she can burn bright and it's she like just has more of a forward moving presence yeah. of like and so like we, I mean, she wakes up every day and gets dressed immediately. Yeah. June will be in her pajamas for four days if I let her. Yeah. <laughs> so there's just, just a different energy. But like, I think, <laughs> I think a lot of times, you know, parents are again, elevating their players, th- their team to mm. coaches when they should in fact be the coach. Yeah. And just that, you know, that's just like a mental switch, a language difference, like right. something to just help you kind of oh yeah, I'm doing that. That's not good. Right. Because. Because a coach is not bad. A coach is, no, I mean, coaches, coaches literally can make or break teams. Yeah. Like they are, I mean, did Ted Lasso teach us anything? <laughs> I think it did. You know, like that is such a, that's such a gift of a role that yeah. we've been given Yeah. to co-coach or, you know, whatever the family setup is like to lead our kids and to watch them and study them and be proactive in making these things happen in their lives and helping them and guiding them and encouraging them instead of just like playing defense all the time. Yeah. And if a coach showed up to a game, you know, like a football game was like, yeah, I don't have a plan for this week. Let's just see what happens. Right. Let's just try to win. Likelihood they're going to (laughs) lose, you know, like, and, and so like, well, that's what Brooke's saying is like the yeah. same, that's that same mentality needs to come to the family in some way of like, Hey, what's our plan? And yeah. again, that's where the family plan calendar was birth. We'll link that in the description. Yeah. Walk and love for 20% off or 15%. I off. just know I the know. code walk and love does something. Does something. I'll give I'm you not... some sort of discount. <laughs> for sure. What? Um, but that, that was a huge help to us of like, okay, we got a plan. Here's the plan. Yeah. And what we're going to do for subscribers on Instagram is like go through our plan every week when we fill out our calendar. Anyway, yeah. sorry, I kind of, no, got, no, no, that's good. But. Yeah. So like, you know, the whole idea of plan the shoot, shoot the plan and how that can just that concept, even though it's not a photo shoot can apply to your life. Um, and, and then I really think that it, it's typically moms. I think it's the I'll call it keeper of the home, the homemaker, whatever word yeah. you want to use. that doesn't make you feel weird because it's actually a really great thing that we yeah. get to do this. Amazing. Um, I do think that that person should be doing it. And so there have been times in seasons where I have not leaned into that. And I've been like, I don't know, T, you're kind of the one, like you're the leader. You're the one pushing right. us all forward. And then it's like, why are you, you're not, you shouldn't be making the meal plan when I'm cooking everything. Yeah. I'm like, like, uh, yeah. Like, you know, eggs, I can get eggs, 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 Chick-fil-A, cheese and eggs, eggs. Chick-fil-A, <laughs> Chick-fil-A leftovers in our eggs. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stick. and so yeah. Right. Hot, hot dog, hot, hot dog. dog. <laughs> um, Anyway, so the keeper of the home needs to do this. And I do believe most times yes. that's moms. And so that's who I'm talking to you. Uh, or that's who I'm talking to. And um, it the the time you set aside does not need to be long or complicated. Right. It doesn't. Yeah. Now, the first few times, and I'm going to share my little notes template method. The first time I did that method, I did ask if I could leave. I went to Akamai, the coffee shop here. Yeah, and I yep. sat for about an hour because I was actually coming up with this template. Yep. Now I can do it in probably 10 minutes. I, I like a little more time. I encourage you to leave to do it though. Right. Because. And I need to get back into that yeah. habit. Absolutely. Which Brooke will explain this to me, ladies. 
I will tell my wife on a Sunday, why don't you go to Akamai? Oh, well, that's close on Sunday or on a Saturday. Why don't you go and do your plan for the week? Why don't you leave the house? Ah, yeah, I don't know. I just like, maybe, no, why don't you just leave the house? Like you can just go, we have cars. You can just grab the keys. Well, at first you go out to the car and you realize you forgot the keys. You come back in, you get the keys. That's just yep, the way it works. I click, click, click. I unlock the car. And just go and take time and I can watch and I can be at home with the kids. I, I, I feel like I'm trying to convince you, you to get like uh, <laughs> some sort of procedure done with the sort of pushback that I get. And I just yeah. don't. Is it guilt? No, is it... no, it's not. Um, I don't feel guilty for leaving. I don't, I don't like all the chairs behind. I don't think I'm like, oh, I don't deserve this. I think for me, ooh, putting me on the spot, I just genuinely like being home. Right. Like it's more of like a homebody thing. And yeah. I'm like, but I'd rather not leave to go figure this stuff out. I just want to be totally left alone in a silent home to figure this all out. <laughs> and that's where I need to go. Okay. That's not going to happen. So for now I'm leaving. Cause like you the know what I mean? second or, I go downstairs go in the car. and like Brooke, like Brooke's upstairs working or something, the girls just, they gravitate you like this, like the earth towards Milky Way, towards the sun. <laughs> Shut up about the sun. Shut up about the sun. <laughs> it's one of <laughs> when my, did you load that? The, I, that's been on here since oh, I updated all these and I've just been waiting. It's just one of my word. favorite clips because it's so intense and it's just so, and so it's, weirdly yeah. specific. Um, anyways, like yeah, the girls would just like gravitate. Like Brooke could be hiding in the closet in the office, yeah. and they'd be like, you know what we need to do right now? We need to play in the office closet. Grab your toys, right? And, and, Which and is so precious. It, it is. And it like, is. It and, really, and, I, and I and you know they'll everybody every you know, they you know. I won't clarify, but just like they out there say, yeah. like, that, you know, they, them, they, they, them, they, them, they, that's a good thing. Go and say that. Like they want to be near us. Yes. They want, you know, they feel connected and they feel safe and they, yeah. you know, it's very sweet. And it's why every mom is like, can I poop in peace? <laughs> that's my sister-in-law Kelsey's phrase. And so now when her kids have to go, they ask for that. Can I please poop in peace? <laughs> Have you ever heard her kids say that? It's so <laughs> funny. And I'm like, well, they're hearing that somewhere. <laughs> Lock the door, gals. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't need to be long or complicated. I do think if you have not done this, I do think the first few times might be longer. Yeah. I hope they're not complicated, yeah. but it might just take more time. It be shorter if you actually share that template. For you to be like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. Um, so what's worked for me the longest, I have done, like, I like planners. I like things like that yep. in life. It, that's not a brand new concept to me. I will say though, and I mean it, that this current super simple yep. kind of, I won't say it's stupid because it's not stupid, but it doesn't feel fancy or fun or flashy. It's right. not a pretty planner. Yep. It's not color coded. I don't have a cool pen. Not a I don't, specific app. It's not, not an app. Yeah. It's just me. It's, it's like me using a piece of paper, except I'm doing it on my my notes app on my phone so or my iPad computer so that I iPad have it when I go to Costco and yeah. I need my list or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And I think, let me speak to that real quick. I think some, something that often gets in our way of doing one more thing. What, what was the phrase that you used? Yeah. I have it right here. Oh, mm -hmm. I think the tool doesn't matter if the practice doesn't exist. Yes. It's like, we think, Oh, I just need that perfect app or that perfect planner or that perfect little thing. And once I have that, then, Easy peasy. you know, it's sort of the same mentality of like, once I make enough money, well, then I'll tithe and give. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just need to yes. get to that point. I right. just need that perfect app or that perfect Well, piece. the running, the brand new running shoes and workout gear is not going to help you. Right. If you don't run. Yeah. Maybe try running in your garbage shoes first. Right. Or if you live on Maui, there are so many, okay, again, this is a tangent. There's so many people in my CrossFit class that work out barefoot. And I know yeah. that like scientifically it's kind of been proven to like, that's the way you're supposed to your foot's, you know, God created your foot in a kind of a incredible yes. way. Imagine that. Right. <laughs> I can only imagine. Oh, do you uh, remember when that song was huge? Yeah, I mean, every day for me. But <laughs> <laughs> I meant on <laughs> <laughs> I uh, like that idea <laughs> of being like, man, do you remember when that was popular? Yeah, and you're yeah. like, still is. My still one. Is. Fruit by the foot every day, baby. Gushers. Mm -hmm. Bugles uh, on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, like all the childhood things. Um, but yeah, it's just like 
sorry, the tangent with the no, that's barefoot, fine. The barefoot thing freaks me out when people work out in their bare yeah. feet. Anyways. Well, that seems like more like a safe. I mean, you guys are like lifting yeah, weights, and they do it. They lift weights. They row. Oh, they yeah. run. They run outside on the pavement. It's like ninety degrees. I know it's crazy. They've just built up like <laughs> like little hobbit feet. Mm, you know that adds up. <laughs> thick and leathery on the bottom. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the, yeah, it's true. Like I, I have written down, like you just need consistency and the tool of your choice. Yeah, I'm not saying you don't need a tool. I use my iPad, which is kind of like my laptop. I don't have it up here, but it's like on the little stand. Okay. And I will say that that tool specifically has helped me be more consistent. Yes, but I did not need that tool to get started no, you and could've. to start the practice. I could have done my I mean, phone. Done I could have just... used real paper. I could have typed it. I could have typed my template prompts on paper and printed it out. Yeah, and just use that every week. Yeah. Um, but I think what, what you're learning about yourself, especially in the age of one, four and seven kids, the kids is yeah. that the quickest route to the tool is the best right now for us. It's like, yeah. we, like, you know, it even, even adding ideal, the step of like, to work. I'm going to print it out. Right. Like that's just like yeah. one extra step that is, that could likely not happen. And right. then all of a sudden we're off course and we're not utilizing what we need to do. And so right. I think I think it's important to know if you're in that season of like little kids or just like a crazy work schedule or whatever that like, yeah. I don't have time to add any extra steps. I want this to be as like straightforward as possible. Like we watched this video, <clears throat> uh, Alex Hormozzi, who's like a marketing guy. And he's like a $100 million like has a hundred million dollars of revenue, like huge business, super successful. And he talks about how like he goes, he was broke at 24 and now at 36, he's worth a hundred million dollars. Whatever. Yeah. Like his, his, his videos are great, but he talks about how like, here's my millionaire work up, uh, wake up routine. Oh, he gets asked all the time. Yeah. What's your what's wake your up morning, routine? Because morning people routine think that like? if I can, people think that if they can Emulate replicate his morning routine. routine, that all of a sudden they'll have the success of his. And he basically goes to like, <laughs> Kind, kind of, of shatter the like idea of a morning routine. He's like, if you want to make money, the best morning routine is like wake up, start started. working, you know, because then you're like actually hit like, you know, he's like, so yeah. my morning routine is I wake up, I drink a cup of coffee and then I start working. Right. You know, and he, he's like, so many people are like, well, I, I, okay, so I've, I've done my uh, morning morning uh meditation and then i've done my morning workout and then i've done my morning walk and then i read my morning book and he's like and so he's like he's like so three hours later you got started <laughs> yeah i've I'm, already made a bunch of money by now yeah. kind of you know and you I, know. I i i disagree with some of the premise because i do think that there is like there needs to be pause and reflection for your soul in the morning like definitely but right i don't know, think he's totally coming from that yeah, place but in life, just but, like the, i just love that idea of like that's the direct line to the goal and yeah. so like the that's, goal is to have a successful work day in, in what he's yeah. in his context. And so don't add all that other stuff in the morning if it's not working yeah. for you. <laughs> and if that stuff helps you like ramp up to work better, then right. yeah, absolutely have it. Like if you work at if working out makes you more like mentally alert right. to work harder or whatever. But like in this case, like what we're talking about is like again, just not an extra step. Like Brooke doesn't need to, you know write out our family mission and vision every time before she plans the like, you right. know, like you're not adding these extra steps in the name of like, this is what it should look like, or this is right. what I think people want to know. It's just like, bam, let's get straight to it. What's the plan? Yeah, totally. So again, I'm going to share my little notes template, but it, again, it, it's not even about the tool. It's not even about my tool that I'm going right. to provide. If your practice doesn't exist, if you have a planner that you love and works for you, or you have some other tool that has already proven to work for you. Absolutely. Go do that. My big point is make the time to do it because yeah. it's the, it's the intentionality of the time, setting it aside, making it a priority, oh. being consistent. That's going to produce yeah. the change. And like, I'll, I'll speak to that. Like one of the talks that integrated one of the times was how a guy did his weekly meeting with his wife mm -hmm. and he shared a spreadsheet and he sent us every, everyone that spreadsheet on like how he does it, does it. And like Brooke and I did that spreadsheet, I think like two times or like, this is great. Cause it's made us start, mm -hmm. but us talking about this it. is not the right spreadsheet Wasn't the for exact us. template for us. And so we've gone through various iterations of it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this Monday we like nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do feel that way. 
Um, and so then I think even within, so then, so then you get to the actual sitting down, planning out what does the next week's next week look like? What's going on? What are things that don't move on the schedule? Soccer's at this time, blanks at this time, schools from this time. Like you, you can't do anything What's about blank? those times. <laughs> um, <laughs> those like are there, but a lot of people, and this is in the, um, the e-course from Jeremy about, like the seven day seven day rhythm and like yeah. planning all that. Like they talk about the big picture seven day rhythm. And then I think one of the sessions April teaches, she gets real specific on like, okay, but how do you, what does that look like? How do you yeah. actually insert that onto your calendar? And so uh, they say, and other people have said, like you want to write down on your week first, the things that really matter. Yeah. Like if you've decided that it, if it matters to us this week that we go to a family sunset, I'm going to write that yeah. down first and then fill in the things yep. that I can't move. And we almost always start when we're writing our family plan calendar with Sabbath. Like we yes. just write it on Saturday. Yeah. Family dinner, family movie on Friday night. Yeah. And then two um, like uh, language pieces or terms that have helped in the planning of that kind of stuff for us is um, defining a sprint. Like yep. are we in a work sprint? Yep. Um, it was first introduced to us in a work sprint setting. The concept of like working really hard and really running at something, a specific project, a specific yep. whatever. You are sprinting towards said goal for a set amount of time. I think theirs was six weeks or eight weeks yeah. or something like that. And then they, who who told us about this as a family, took a week off. Yeah. Like chilled out. That obviously is if you're owning your own business. And I understand not everybody can do that. Yeah. But <laughs> I I have written down on my little template work sprint. I have a little emoji of somebody nice. running. Smart. And then I have house sprint. Like, nice. are there things in the house that we are actually choosing to sprint towards right now and if not uh, i mean weeks on end now i've just written like na not applicable we're right. not doing that yeah. right now and when i sit down and acknowledge that i'm way less bothered in fact i don't even really think about the fact that the kitchen cabinets aren't painted right. or this hasn't happened or like yeah. those things that i'm like man someday but it's like i've already predetermined that doesn't matter this week because right. this this and this does and so I can let it go. Yeah. I don't need to hold it alongside of like, I hope we don't forget or I hope we get there someday yeah. because we've determined we're not sprinting towards that right now. Yep. So like, let it be. Mm -hmm. So the concept of sprint, I think you could, I think you could probably apply it to anything. I think you could sprint towards something as a family. I mm -hmm. think you could sprint towards um, like a certain thing you're trying to tra like train your kids. Like you could yep. sprint towards teaching your whatever yeah. you're old to tie their and shoe. Sprint, like it's not even like we're trying to do this as quickly as possible. It's just the, the like it's the, it's the like energy I'm required. Energy, like, I'm, like I'm going full I'm force hard. at this. You know, yeah, it doesn't just mean like quick and fast. And no, floppy. no. It yeah. just means it's like, just like, you know, like a sprinter, you see them explode out of the blocks and they're, you know, every muscle is they flexed. Know they're going to run like, hard until they reach said thing. But also like a sprinter, great sprinters are relaxed. Their faces are relaxed. And relax so it's face, like, relax your body. And so like, there is an element of that language that Labor is so good because like if I'm sprinting, I am moving hard, but I am controlled and I'm trying to do this with precision and excellence. Yes. And I, to get to the goal as fast, you know, to cross so, the finish yeah. line. Well, yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's really helpful language for seasons of life. Like, you know, I know right now, like October, like we have, I have the, the t-shirt Academy, the first week of October, we have the Christmas collection launching October 14th. Mm -hmm. We like October is a work sprint. It's just 100%. like we need to maximize uh, beauty counter holiday launches. We yep. start, we're starting our subscription. Like yep. we, we know that we are in a work sprint. And so like that helps us focus on what matters most in this season. Yep. And, um, and so like, yeah, it's just super helpful. It allows you and your spouse to be on the same page um, I do believe that as our kids get older, we will bring them into that language more and more. Yeah. Um, to, so that they can understand like, okay, like this, like, cause, cause in my mind right now, November is going to be much more house focused mm. because we've lived here over a year now in this home. We have too much stuff. Uh, there are some <laughs> projects that like we just haven't finished or even started yet. And so yeah. it's like, I want to orient my time in, in November but like, like even in November, Brooke will have like a heavy view to counter month of, you know, Black Friday and all that Black kind of Friday stuff. Deal. And so like, we might even be like, okay, Brooke's going to sprint towards this. I'm going to sprint towards this. Like right. that, that is language that we also use, which is helpful. So. Yeah. And then my other one, which is really recent. Um, I actually just shared this to the subscribers, I think yesterday. 
I was on Pinterest because I love to scroll Pinterest. I would much rather scroll Pinterest. I go online. I go click, click, click. Then like, in, you know, Instagram or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and I pin stuff all the time. And I don't, I don't even ever like, I'm not necessarily making all these things. I just right. like being on that platform. As my cousin Andrew would say, Pinterest. <clears throat> and so um, somehow I got suggested or targeted or whatever for this girl's YouTube video explaining how she builds out her Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. And it was really pretty. Like her color, her custom color codes were really pretty. And so it got me to click over because I was like, hey, I'd love to see how she does this yeah. and how she plans her week. First, she logs into Google Calendar. Reset password. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Ugh, I didn't get the code. Ah, try another way. Um, yeah. So I watched it and it was really good and it was great. And I had some takeaways, but my main <sighs> takeaway was at the top of her week. Um, it, and she almost mentioned it kind of non. It was like not a big deal. She's like, oh, you're probably wondering why this is up there. So it was like Monday, Wednesday for her. It said Monday and there was a <laughs> potato emoji. And then it was Tuesday and there was like a, maybe like a little sparkle or star or like, it was a, just a different emoji. Wednesday, potato, Thursday, star, Friday, um, was like her kick a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah like, so maybe show, like obviously. a dynamite stick yeah. or like yeah. something. And she's like, oh, potato day just means that like, um, you know, I can look like a sack of potatoes or I can look like a couch potato because I'm not getting ready that day. And I've planned my whole week accordingly that I don't need to get ready yeah, on a no, potato day. No calls, no, no calls, no Zoom meetings. No, no I don't need to make any content because she's like a blogger content person. She's like, and then on for her Tuesday, Thursdays, She's like, you know, I get ready almost first thing and I knock out all these things and I make all my content and I only schedule my meetings for that day and whatever, whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, we already have done that. We, we've said like, do I need to get ready today? Are we doing anything? Let's save that for Thursday. I'll already get ready for the podcast. Like we yep. already talk about it, but we've never had a label. Yep. And so being able to call it a potato day. All right. I mean, you literally yesterday, you were like, is today a potato day? Like it was yeah. this, the this fast way of clarifying, like what is today? What matters most today? And what have we already decided matters? Yeah. Like it, it's pre-decided. And so the sprint and the potato day, which I know it doesn't apply to everybody, but <clears throat> yeah. I had somebody, I don't even think she necessarily makes content for a living, but she was just like, I get in this thing where it's like, if I don't get ready every day, then I feel like I've fallen off the bandwagon. I'm never going to get ready again. Right. Or I never get ready. Cause I don't really need to. And then I'm like, Oh man, I don't really feel like myself. And I yeah. kind of wish that maybe I would like, yeah. So just kind of pre deciding, you know, I don't know, maybe you only pick up your kid from, maybe your kid only goes to school on Wednesday mornings and you're like, Hey, it'd be nice to look sparkle today. day, sparkle day. Maybe that's my sparkle day. Yeah. And like, you, and so you have a better day cause you feel better anyway, all that just like good, helpful yeah. little language things. Um, and so I think setting aside the time to plan your week, is the we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's the equivalent of like, I want to climb the ladder one tiny little rung at a right. time, one week at a time, instead of being like, I, need I to... haven't climbed anything in six weeks and everything feels like chaos and everything's spinning right. and nobody knows what's going on or who the coach is. And so I now need to jump from this rung to that rung and that yeah. feels impossible. And sometimes it is literally impossible. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll also add that like, this is my last main note, is that like, even after I do this and I can, I'll share it. I have my top little section where it's like how, uh, what matters most, literally at the very top. And I have to pick one thing. Right. So what'd you I pick write it week? all down first. I write down everything that could matter. Yep. Everything. Replace all landscaping in front yard because <laughs> my brain, that's where my brain is holding all the things all the time that I ever want to do for all of time. All the dominoes are the same size. All my coins are the same uh, size. And so I I write it all down. And then and then it's very easy to see, okay, maybe that doesn't really matter this week. Right. Maybe what does matter this week is taking pictures of the holiday sets that just came in so yeah. that I can use them and my team can use them. Ah, okay. I'll landscape later. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> or I'll be able to afford the landscaping someday because of what I'm choosing. Anyway, yeah. um, so what matters most? And then work sprint, house sprint. Um, I have reminders like what fills me up and what drains me. And yeah. those are often very similar things. <laughs> TJ. Hmm, TJ. TJ. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. But it does change in different seasons. Like sometimes what drains me is like, you know, the kids have been sick. And so I'm not sleeping as much. Yeah. 
And other times it's way more big picture. Like I know I'm drained when my expectations are sky high. Mm -hmm. Like it can be very like up here in the clouds, like, oh, this is what fills me up and what drains me. Or it can be real specific, like (laughs) this thing. And then I have uh, what's driving me crazy. And usually that's kind of similar to the what drains me a little bit, but (laughs) it's, no, it's usually a very specific task. Like that this freaking trash can won't slide out the whole way right now. Like that's where I write down something. I have tried to fix that. You have tried. No, I know. Or that like the swing, the swings were really squeaky a while back and it was like just enough to make me notice. And it's, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but like it's there. You feel those things in life. Like, why don't and I have some any pens feel on them, my desk? Some people feel them why? more than others. 100%. Like you burn bright. You burn brighter than I do at stuff like that. Right. But I mean, have there not been moments you've sat at your desk and be like, why do I yeah. not have a pen up here? Yeah. I don't understand. Well, probably because we've never decided where the pens yeah. go. Like and for me, never... it's like, how is the garage dirty? What's driving you crazy? Where, where did all this stuff come from? Yeah. That's mostly mine. <laughs> why do we have so much stuff? Why... Do we, um, yeah, it's hold on. I, yeah, I know why we have it going so. I go online, I go click, click, click. Three words for you. Treat yourself. Oh, I forgot one. Work sprint, house sprint, health sprint. Nice. I have my health sprint in there because there are times where I am, again, sprinting, trying, putting forth a lot of effort in an area of like, I'm trying to do this three times a week or I'm trying to not right. eat this as much. Like, you know, and acknowledging it. Um, so like my health sprint for this week was just eating three meals a day. Hey, here's an idea. Let's actually eat a meal so your body can expect that food is coming and then maybe feel like your body can be like, hey, I'm going to burn this off because I know more is coming yeah. and I don't need to hold on to it. Right. Um, <laughs> I feel like people are going to connect to this. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, episode on like a spiritual right. level. I also have a sort of unspoken rule like if I see that I have listed a work sprint, a house sprint and a health sprint, I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. Like you can't, you yeah. just can't in life. You can't yeah. move all that forward every single week. <laughs> and I would, I would clarify those like, like, cause I think what, I think what some people might hear is like, oh, if, what about your kids? What about your spiritual life? What about like, oh, because, because again, this isn't That's in my work and my house and my health. Right. But this isn't like the only sole focus, uh, like we have actual rhythms and, and yes, daily rhythms and weekly rhythms that like, that's just default for us now. And so like, there's, there's an element of things that like, that's just, like an umbrella we've already talked yes. about and established separately. And then this is my, like, what is literally happening? Yeah. This is like very Because I specific. think what people could hear and might get confused is like, well, how do I, like, when do I make dinner? Like, it, I, I think right. that there's a, there's a really great element of what you're doing here, but I think some people might not realize that like, there's also a foundation of weekly rhythm, weekly Sabbath, yes. daily rhythm, yes. daily tasks that we have done so often and so frequently that now those grooves are, are very deeply in our brain that we don't have to put them on a list like this. Right. I just like, I feel like I, I don't know. Sure. I just need to say that. Like, yeah. Um, what drains me, what matters most this week, what's driving me crazy. And then what we're celebrating. Okay. I make myself list something we're celebrating. Sometimes it's really obvious. Daisy's turning one. Yeah. And other times it's Abby like, started. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah. And then I get real specific on I usually do this on a Sunday. So I start my, with my Sunday, everything I need to do on my Sunday. And it's an actual, oh, you can see it. Like it's a checklist, checklist yep. you know, and it's things I check off and I go through every single day and I'm, because I'm being intentional and proactive. If like, oh man, I need to respond to that person about that, that thing I never RSVP to or that whatever. But it, I, when I think of it all on Sunday, when I'm writing it down, I, I, I try to uh, not necessarily evenly displace, but like if I don't actually need to RSVP until Friday, I'm not going to put it on Sunday or Monday's right. list. And that's what you used to do. And that's used what I used to do. I would just make on one giant the list. Day lay, yeah. And then I'd be overwhelmed and I would pick things out of priority. I wouldn't yeah. do what matters most first and all that or with focus. Yeah. And so um, I do. I go through every every day and write down the things that are already gonna just kind of happen because I like to check those things off. That feels nice. Yeah. And then other things that need to happen like that day specifically. Um, and then when I see that week and my tasks, it becomes way easier to figure out food. Mm. 
because like and food can be such a tension point food, for so yeah, many yeah and people. we've talked about that yeah. and it's just like it's you do it all the time every day and you're doing it for all your people yep. and it's a thing and do they like it and do i have the ingredient and is and it healthy blah, 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 blah. And, you know what's hidden inside of it and it <laughs> right <laughs> canola oil that's what's hidden inside of everything um and so the food does become a lot easier and that's a whole separate thing i can talk about <gasps> like butter is my favorite food you know um the, the like pantry list I'm working from, which is super yeah. helpful. And the meal plans a one week at a time, which is super helpful. Which we're going to do for subscribers. So gonna, I'm going to talk about all that in subscribers. Can probably do it here too at some point. But yeah. the more like in the moment stuff will be um, in the subscriber stuff. And it, it does become easier because then I'm able to see, oh, we're not even home on a Wednesday night. Or we're not whatever. Yeah. And so... I can make better decisions. So I've decided that on the days, on my sparkle days, when I'm getting ready and working more, like my face is required in front of a camera yeah. or I'm talking, I don't want to have to go downstairs and cook a huge meal because yeah. I've probably put out more effort than like do 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 sitting at yeah. my computer doing other stuff. And so I have those days starred on my meal list, whatever, as like super easy so it needs to be a what the lazy genius calls a brainless crowd pleaser. Something that like I'm, hot dogs. I don't need to one. I don't need to think about making it. It's brainless. Yep. And it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves it in our in our family. And these are different. I just want to lie on the beach and eat hot dogs for everybody. But that's the day I plug those in, yep. or the day that I use a crock pot heavily or an air fryer heavily. And that's some. Yeah, that's most days. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> but it just becomes a lot easier. And then week after week, and the uh, I started to say this like 20 minutes ago, the last thing I have written is like, I maybe get 50% done. Right. The goal is not complete completion. Like, it's yeah. just not. That's not life. Other things get added. Other things get taken away. Yep. But the point is then I, so on any device, but I know on my iPad, I can have split screen. So I have last week's note up. Mm -hmm. and I copy paste the upper part of the template that I want to use. Yep. And then I look at that and I'm like, oh, wow, this stuff didn't get done. This didn't happen. And I move over and it's interesting what stuff actually after I've gone through a whole week doesn't matter as much as I thought yeah. and never actually gets, yeah. never needs to get moved over. Yeah. Some of it does, but not yeah. all of it. And then I add in the new things and we move on. And what matters most this week? Oh, we have family coming in town. Yeah. That's going to totally change how we move forward Basically and function. Do everything. Yeah. Like when the collection... Week samples arrive that totally changes, changes everything everything for us yeah and so yeah. but the point of it all is that you have to set aside the time to do it and that can feel hard that can feel so hard good. for moms i think it can feel hard for anybody but yeah when you're just like yeah but i need to do laundry and i need to do this right now and i feel like i haven't talked to this kid in two days and maybe i should sit and read him a book like yeah you want me to step outside and journal for 30 minutes like that like that's yeah. kind of the boiled down yeah. like are you kidding me right now like we can <laughs> you can get in that mindset and it's just like what are we doing yeah, yeah and you have to put in the time and effort and it can you can start small yeah and you can like don't overwhelm yourself yeah but it is it's very helpful and really clarifying yeah. helps us make a lot of decisions it does. like well we decided this 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 week not all yeah. the time just this week, this that isn't what matters most. And so we have to let it go. And I think one thing that would be super helpful for some of you who, who are listening to Brooke and thinking like, oh, I'm not even there yet, like <laughs> is to establish a, a healthy weekly rhythm or, or just a weekly rhythm. And yeah. the best way to do that is to say, hey, Sabbath is on this day. Mm -hmm. And you'll start to see that that day changes, obviously. And you'll start to learn what what you find restful, what you find worshipful, like yeah. all those things. And then all of a sudden you'll see like, oh, like for us, it was Saturday. So then like Friday started to change mm -hmm. and then Sunday started to change. And then like you'll, you'll start to see that. And then yeah. once you start to see those days kind of take their place in the weekly rhythm, you'll then find, I think, space to do something like this mm -hmm. with a lot more clarity and understanding on your expectations and what it's going to look like and all that kind of stuff. Because yeah. you now, like Brooke is plugging this system in to a foundational system that God created for us. Yes. And because of that, I'm not this, real, yes. uh -huh. this, this has so much more power this tool can be so much more powerful yeah. when plugged into everything else that we've set up and that yeah. we've worked hard for. Yeah. 
versus and that honestly has been given to us like to god it. has given us the seven day rhythm he he, he maps it out in create in the creation story yeah and so like it's a gift we can unwrap it or not and so yeah. like once we unwrap it then it starts to allow us to really i mean you can't use a gift until you unwrap it and mm-hmm. we've unwrapped that gift and now it's allowing us to use it so well that something like this then just is like oh man it's like a bonus gift it's like eventually yeah it's like yeah. a gift within a gift you know and that, and uh and it's just been really like cool. that game at christmas yeah. where you keep unwrapping with well the without the gloves on or without whatever, the craziness the though and True. so <laughs> yeah so good brooke any anything oh. you want to no i'm with? realizing we could have gone into the whole like naming your days and all that stuff yeah. but maybe that's a separate maybe that's next week yeah y'all we've considered doing okay. podcast series yeah we've never we've never named anything a series oh uh, we did the walk and love story was three <gasps> parts okay we did but as you all know, we love and believe in the power of naming, which is literally what I just said the yeah. next episode might be about. So I had the idea to name a series. I don't have any episodes long. I didn't get that far. My, my flight was only so long um, <laughs> and I had other things to do. But like, I don't know, like at home or just like, I don't know, things that things like food and things like when when do we do these things that matter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. How do they so show are you asking? Are really you matter? asking people to? I'm sort of to, asking, and I'm sort of just what saying series, to you out loud. What are some series that you'd like Brooke and I to do a deeper dive into on the podcast? Mm. Like it consecutively. Does help us yeah. Because it's it is hard to get in everything we're thinking about a certain topic in, in one hour, episode. Yeah. You know, not that we can't talk. We can say a lot in an hour. I know we do, but like. Sometimes I'm then like, oh, you know what I should have said? And yeah. if I can loop that in for a couple of weeks at a time, yeah. I feel like that's going to be a much better, much, much better, much better uh, delivery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So let us know. I don't know. And that's, that's where I'm at. Amazing. I think you did a great job. It was really helpful. I think people are going to really be blessed by it. Oh, um, thanks. I think that's all we have for today. I think so. We have a little one peeking in another little one <laughs> same little one uh, thank you so much for listening thank you for making us a part of your week remember the christmas collection launches on october 14th yes october 13th if you are a subscriber on mm. instagram i think that's it that's it okay, okay I, love I love you, you bye, bye.